Hi guys, welcome to another edition of Gold Bazan. Today we are joined by Stephen Baytosher of Toronto FC, our own player. Um, alongside me is Pejvan Pars, another director of Gold Bazan. Stephen, thank you for coming on Gold Bazan again. It's a pleasure and I'm um, looking forward to speaking to you. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Stephen, um, first we want to start off, you know, your journey as an MLS player started with the San Jose Earthquakes. Now you've Join is such a great team that you guys just recently had your first ever playoff win and just made it to the MLS Cup final with the Toronto FC. How's this journey been for you so far this season? Yeah, it's been a good journey so far. I think, uh, you know, you look at the city and uh, what it means to them and uh, they, they've been so passionate in the years past even though they haven't necessarily uh, made it to the playoffs or even won a playoff game. So, uh, for me to come in the off season and really shore up the defense and and help them out uh, and get that first playoff victory, it meant a lot just to, to us as an organization and the fans. So uh, right now we're we're doing well. We're on a good roll right now, and uh, hopefully after Saturday we can host the trophy. Stephen, before I even uh, get into the specifics of that game, um, uh, the quick question that we just wanted to ask: How is it like playing with such great international players such as Giovinco? Josie Altid or, you know, even Michael Bradley as your captain, which he's just giving a press conference right now. How's this journey been for you? Yeah, you know, obviously those players that you mentioned are, are world-class players. You, you look at Giovinco, uh, what he's done in the past just two years in MLS. And even with his time in Juventus and the Italian national team, he's a world-class player. Um, everything he does is unbelievable. And uh, you go talking about outdoor see what you know the, the club teams that he's played for in the past and you know honestly he's he's the best u.s striker uh that we have currently so to, to be able to to form with him and, and also michael bradley who, who did, earlier this year was voted the best uh, american player so you have quite the talent and uh it's very it's an honor to play with with those guys on the same team and uh you know you have a lot of respect for them and, and their work rate and and what it means to them to be part of a winning organization. So you just you want to be right there by their side. Stephen, the next question we have for you is that um, knowing, looking at the matches you've been playing recently, I've been looking closely at the, you know, you're playing pretty much like as a right wing um, back position, um, which you've done very, very well. And um, everybody has been talking about you, especially with the, the cross that you did, which went viral on Twitter. <laughs> Against the Montreal Impact, um, how, how did you how do you like that role, and do you think that's going to be predominantly your new your new role going down the road? Yeah, you know, obviously uh, we changed uh, the formation a little bit right when we got into the playoffs. Actually, the game right before uh, the playoffs, so the final game of the season, and uh, it's something that I'm comfortable with, and uh, on the left side, Moro is comfortable with, uh, just because growing up we both played midfield a lot and. Uh, we, we do attack a lot even when we do play a four-back four system, but now as wingbacks, we have more freedom to go forward. and uh, It, it kind of goes to, to the Italian national team and, and the way they play. If you play correctly, it's, it's very effective. And even look at Chelsea now that uh, the coach is, uh, is over there and uh, the, their formation that plays is the same. And if you play correctly, it's very, very effective. So it does ask... Uh, a lot of running from your wingbacks, but you know when you have a player like myself and Mora who, uh, who we enjoy running, we, we do it for fun. So uh, it, it definitely is beneficial for our team, and uh, so far it's working uh, really well. Yeah. Stephen, the last question I've heard from my side before I pass it on to Pejman Pars. Obviously, as you know, you growing up playing football or soccer, and um, it must be a very surreal moment for you to know that you'll be playing in the MLS Cup final. And uh, interesting enough, you might be correct, man, but I think you're actually the first person that will be featuring as an Iranian American into that final. And um, did you ever expect it, especially going up against a side like Seattle Sanders, which, you know, as you know, they've been fantastic this season? Yeah, obviously it's an honor to be the, the first Iranian American to be uh, in the finals. If that is true, I don't I don't know uh, the exact fact, but I, I think you might be right. I think I would be the first Iranian American, and, and if that is true, uh, it's an honor. Uh, but but as far as playing against Seattle, uh, they're they're a very good team, and uh, it's it's nice to see that two clubs that really do it the, the right way as far as. Uh, the passionate fans, they're there no matter what. 
and an organization that uh, believes in uh, doing everything from nutritional standpoint to making sure the facilities are first class uh, to, to spending the right amount of money for, for different players. So from, from top to bottom, both clubs, you know, Seattle and ourselves, have, I believe, have done uh, the necessary means to, to win a championship. And uh, up until this point, they haven't been there. But right now, one of us are going to win it, and hopefully it's us on Saturday. Uh, Steven, uh, why do you have a number 33 in Toronto? Is there any special reason? Uh, have you seen any of my other numbers? Do you know what numbers they were? Uh, no, I, I don't... Uh, yeah, they've all been 33, I mean. but um, it's just symbolic, They've I all guess. been 33, my friend. <laughs> Every single one. Why is that? In Vancouver. Why is that? Uh, growing up, I always had one number, uh, mm -hmm. and that was number three. Even in high school, they retired my number three jersey. Uh, it's just a number that I have had since I was five years old all the way up to college. Uh, when wow. I got to the pros, someone had three, so I went with 33, and, you know, I, I decided <laughs> to make it my own, and I stuck with it. Awesome. Okay, interesting. Uh, yeah. you, you earlier talked about uh, Giovinco, and uh, we know that he had some problems communicating uh, in, in the beginning when he came to the MLS uh, due, due to his uh, poor English. Uh, how do you communic with, uh, communicate with him uh, nowadays? Uh, have, has his English improved? Uh, obviously, I can't speak for, for when he came here because I wasn't here, uh, but this year has been fine. His English is very good, and we communicate very uh, very easily. So uh, just like anybody else uh, that maybe English is their second language, uh, but he's been here a while now, and he's been, he's been I think, taking courses, and uh, yeah, his English is uh, very good. Yeah. Steven, uh, you come to an age now where you're proving yourself very well in uh, MLS and you're, you're among the, uh, you're, you're playing good teams and you're doing really well. Uh, how do you see a move to Europe? Is it something that's on your mind or is it a, a goal that you have? Uh, yeah, you know, obviously it was a goal of mine when I was uh, just getting started uh, before I got selected by the Stanley Earthquakes. I had an offer in Belgium. And uh, I decided to go back to school for one more year to get my degree. So it was always uh, it was always a goal of mine. I don't think it's necessarily out the window, uh, but the opportunities that have come up, and you know, obviously I had goals here too to to win an MLS Cup. And uh, I thought my best chance to win an MLS Cup was uh, helping a team that was very good attacking, but needed some help defensively. So. Uh, hopefully on Saturday, if we host the uh, host the cup and we're winners, then I could think about maybe Europe and, and getting closer to to Iran, so uh, so I can get more call ups because I think that's the ultimate goal. Yeah, so so your ultimate goal is is uh, trying to get uh, uh, your place back in the Iranian national team for the 2018 World Cup, correct? Co yes, correct, correct. And uh, uh, have you been in talks with uh, Iranian coach Carlos Kairos lately, or anyone from the staff? Uh, not, not, not too too lately. I think it was either this uh, off season, right before the season started, or the end of last year that I talked to them. And uh, you know, they they did they, they did mention uh, the the flight was very long for me, especially for some of these games. Uh, they have domestic players that. Uh, it make more sense. So I, I understood that part, and uh, hopefully, you know, I think uh, I think we have a game coming up in January, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. against Morocco. Yes, indeed. Uh, so you know, hope, yeah. hopefully, uh, I can get called back into that, knowing that you know they're not necessarily taking me away from uh, from my club team in an important time. You know, some of the games uh, that that we play. Uh, we, the MLS doesn't necessarily have an international break, so I, I believe Carlos's concern is that you know he's he's pulling me away from a, kind of a, an important time for my club team. So I think he understands that as well, and I think January would be a perfect time for them to, to call me back in, and mm -hmm. uh, I can get back with the boys, which would be which would be great. Yeah, uh, we have a Twitter question from a, a guy called Oscar Melander, and he's actually a Swedish white cap. There are not many of them, but he's he's one of them. <laughs> uh, he, he wants to know uh, how you look 
uh, see your time uh, at the White Cup, uh, at the White Caps, uh, what the club meant for you and your your development as a football player. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I love my time in Vancouver. It was, and it, it is one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been to. If you guys haven't gone, you really need to go visit Vancouver because it's it's just gorgeous from the mountain uh, to the ocean to the city. It's it's a smaller feel, but it it's really just uh, it, it almost looks like a poster card how beautiful it is everywhere you look, and especially even this time of year when a little bit of snow comes into the mountains. It's just uh, it's beautiful and it's clean. I, I loved everything about it, and and the team was great. It was a very very family oriented team. Uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, we didn't win an MLS Cup there. We did have two very good seasons. Uh, I think, I think we were, I think we we're top five in both years that I was there uh, amongst the league. Uh, but you know, at the at the end of the day, business is business, and uh, I'm here trying to help Toronto uh, win a championship <laughs> on Saturday. Kajon, is there any other further questions you have? Um. No, not, not anymore. Uh, we got yeah. all the questions. Uh, so Steven, I have my last ask. question for you. Um, thank you again so much for your time, and I also thank uh, Toronto FC for giving us the opportunity to speak to you. My last question to you, Steven, is that do you still talk to um, Ashkan Dejaga or Daniel Daveriado, any boys from uh, Team Medley? Yeah, I still talk to, to, to some of the guys uh, occasionally, you know, uh, if I do something good or if they do something good. We, we send a message here or there just... Just saying what's up and seeing mm-hmm. how each other is doing. Right. Appreciate it. Steven, my friend, uh, once yeah. again, I wish you the best of luck. I'll be definitely, we'll all be definitely watching and rooting you on. I know it's going to be such a great game to watch, and I hope to see you on top um, when it comes to Saturday night. Yes, I hope so too. Thanks. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you, Steven. Thank you for coming on again. Thank you, appreciate Steven. it. Take, take care. Bye, guys.